times it's a lot of snow. So why is it that so little is known about what snow and what avalanche is? Well, it's a really complex material. Snow is to start out, it's frozen water in, when you have multiple layers. And then you add water to it, you know, it's complex enough when you're just dealing with basically frozen ice with a little bit of water vapor. And then you add liquid to it, and it just does crazy things to snow as a material. So it really changes the dynamic really rapidly. It's a shorter season that we're worried about what snow and what avalanche has. It. You know, we see it at the end of the year, it's a lot less common. It's uh, you know, far less prevalent as far as the incidents that are where people are involved, fatalities or just incidents, people being caught. And it's kind of human nature, I say to ignore it, but the way that our, our minds work, if you have something that you know a fair amount about, and you can keep learning about that, or something that you don't know jack shit about, and you have the choice to learn about one or the other, you're going to naturally choose, most people are, to gravitate towards whatever you already know something about and learn more about it. So it's pretty easy to have that one event somewhere in your career where you're dealing with wet slabs and just be like, whew, glad nothing happened there. Now I can forget about that for another 10 years. I know that's how it is for, for me. I'm sure I'm not the only one here, or at least it was earlier in my uh, career. Operational pressure or operational personnel can be over. <coughs> Are there any ski controllers or any of the work at Skiers think that are like, oh man, I'm going to be a kayak, climber, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> On days like today, especially, you know, it's such good skiing up there at Skiers, I'm sure, too. Just quality. So you definitely run into that, or people maybe don't pay attention to what's going on when they do see incidents. They don't try to figure out what happened quite as much as they would with an early deep slab incident in January that really piques your interest. And then rain, waterlogged skins, post hole in your waist, breakable crust, more than plate ice. They're all you know, tons of fun, way less fun than that. You know, a foot and a half of snow on a nice, firm, large snow patch with no slab in it, going to ski and having a great time. So it's, uh, it's something that, you know, and Steve, Steve Custer didn't pay me to say this, but there are a lot of opportunities out there for, uh, for uh, the proverbial low hanging fruit. It's pretty easy to, to find a project to look at with what's known. The more you look into it, the more unanswered questions there are. Really. So our, our goal for today, increase the avalanche community's understanding of what's known and what avalanche phenomena. Um, mainly, I want to highlight our presentation and discussion of facts, theories, and, and experiences. I'm going to go over a, real briefly an overview of what we're going to see from the presentations. But we do want to make sure that everyone understands this is a discussion. There are a lot of people who know as much more than some of the presenters, like when you put me in there, for sure, about uh, what's going on with, with what's now. So we want this to be a two-way exchange of ideas and information. So first, uh, Andrew Slaughter will be the first one up, and he'll introduce us to what is wet snow, and then how's it get that way? And this is actually from his office. When he was getting this talk together, I just had to take a picture of his chalkboard, so he's going to tell us if that's uh, <laughs> I didn't even write that. If that's snow, <laughs> he claims to have not written it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's just like the, the ingredient for the sauce in McDonald's Big Macs or something. Who knows what it's going to be? Okay, that's not that. Yeah. Um, and then we'll move in a little bit on how does water move through the snow. Eric Bice will, has done a lot of work on it. He'll, he'll do the bulk of that. I'll talk about it a little bit. But we'll, look at that really important phenomenon, that snow moving through a layer of snow pack. It's not a real simple concept. And we'll look at how do these two things affect the snow packs. And, uh, and on snow pack strength and mechanics, kind of a real fast overview of uh, Avalanche 101. And then the bulk of it in the afternoon, operational issues, case studies, facts, theories, and musings. Kind of, and again, I want to highlight going both ways between the people who are watching the people who are presenting. I think it'll be really interesting. Then Eric Pike is also going to do a talk for us on uh, possible effects of climate change. And this is something that you know, I think most people who have been around are probably noticing that something's been different. I remember talking to John Eulen when we were setting up a uh, rope line on Upper Morning Star at Big Sky, which is underneath AZ shoots for Jans, for those of you who might know him as Jans instead of John Eulen. We were setting it up, and he was, for, uh, this is about 10 years ago, and he'd always been, uh, when we would talk about wet slides hitting that Morning Star, I don't see what the big deal is. And I finally got the chance to talk to him for a while. And I said, well, you know, when, over the past 20 years, it's just it's not something that we had to worry about really until after the scary closed. We just didn't have big ones. We had a real small, superficial, just real minor um, wet activity, but we didn't really worry about 
big things popping here, three foot deep, wet loose lines coming down onto the ski runs. So it's something that uh, I just have, he said, from his point of view, it's something I haven't had to worry about as much. And then in classic Jones style, he said, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it is something that seems to be changing in a fairly dramatic stamp, um, time frame. And I think Eric will give us some good insight to, you know, if maybe I'm seeing things or maybe not, and where we might be out in the future. And then Carl's going to kind of wrap things up with the kind of where we've been, where we are, and what, maybe what the future is for what's known and what avalanches. Then we'll uh, continue that discussion over some slush, slushy beverages. Last night, Mark Staples was talking about tequila, so I had to get that up there. <laughs> what better medium for tequila than slush, right? <laughs> over at the Elwards. They have a table that'll for sure fit 15 or 20 people, and they're not going to turn any on the web. We've got a big group discussion going over some food and beverage there also. So I just want to, one more time, and I'll uh, shut up, encourage people to please ask questions when the presenters are speaking, and some of them maybe won't want people to interrupt and ask questions during the talk. Some of them will, they can lay that out right up front. Um, they may say, well, I'm going to hit that, it's a really good question, keep that in mind, and then you know, after it, if I don't answer it, then ask me again. But, you know, definitely have all your questions. There's lots of time built in at the end of each talk for uh, all the questions to get answered. Um, the one other thing I didn't hit on, just so people know, I know we don't all know each other here, but try to mingle a little bit in the breaks. Just a quick show of hands. We have a pretty good cross-section here. Um, highway folks. I know we have Rich and Maura and Jamie and Eric, so I think we have four highway people, which hard to believe there really aren't that many. And then Don Bachman, who wears every hat there is basically, and has <laughs> been doing everything in the uh, avalanche world over the years. Skiri folks, there are a ton of Skiri folks here from Big Sky, Bridger, Moonlight, Yellowstone Club. Uh, Don Sheriff, again, he wears kind of every hat. Instruction. Uh, Knowles, operational issues. He's going to show us some interesting stories and tales of woe from his uh, industrial avalanche work, I guess you call it. Um, forecast center guys are here. Who am I forgetting? Uh, MSU, there are a bunch of MSU folks. How many MSU folks have been here? All right, good showing. And then uh, <coughs> Lucas from NRCS. He's a local snowtail guy. Um, who we have when we here? Carl, of course, the National Avalanche Center. And a few recreational skiers. And a few recreational folks. So we have a good, good mix, good cross section of people. And we're probably all recreational skiers at times, and we don't have our work in that so much. Any questions about um, facilities, this, that, anything? Okay, well, with that, we'll, uh, Andrew. Slaughter here, I'll get his talk queued up. I'll introduce Andrew real briefly. He's uh, finishing up his PhD at Montana State, working kind of underneath that Adams in the engineering department. Actually, it's the first draft is done, right? First draft is done. In the home stretch. It's only 300 pages. Only 300 pages. Funny. <laughs> I'm sure he'd love to have it. You can take a nap, that's great. And he's been working on uh, energy development stuff, more so with near fasting near surface fasting and radiation issues, but uh, definitely an expert in, in energy balance, which is what he's here to talk to us about today. So, Andrew Slaughter. Yeah. So yeah, most of this talk is just about energy balance, and usually this talk, this whole talk is about two slides. We tend to just kind of like race through this stuff, so Scotty wanted me to get into a little bit more detail. I spent a lot of time on radiation, mostly probably because that's what I'm most familiar with, and talk about some of the other modes of heat transfer that go on in the snowpack, and then finally I'll get on to kind of the metamorphosis a little bit. I'm going to outline again, kind of lay out what the energy balance is, talk about radiation in general, and then kind of narrow it down to a few terms that you probably heard but maybe don't know exactly what they mean. Um, sensible latent heat, same kind of thing, that's uh, just different modes of heat movement. Um, and I'll define those. Conduction invention, invention that's in the snowpack. Then I have some few examples of uh, experiments we've done in the lab, some pictures from out in the field, um, some stuff Mark did, and then finally get into kind of what's going on at the snow grain level with wet snow. And you, you can shout out questions too while I'm 
11. So, start off with just kind of what, what is the energy balance? And I'm going to throw a lot, of, a lot of names and nomenclature and all this stuff out there, but really it's just being observant to what's going on out there. Um, first thing is pretty obvious. Got this big orb putting all kinds of energy into the snow. That's what we call shortwave radiation. And I'll get into more detail on these terms. Long wave, the sky, clouds, trees, you and me, <coughs> we're all emitting long wave radiation right now. Um, so that's impacting the snow. You see there's some, maybe some wind going off this ridge, so that may kind of be associated with sensible heat. That's just kind of the snow interacting with the air around it. And then late heat, that has to do with phase change. So snow can go between liquid, vapor, and solid. In the case for this talk, usually, usually I'm just talking solid or vapor, but now we got this liquid thing going on with this wet snow. So those are kind of the four main components. And there's a lot of stuff that you can add to this and different details you can add to all these terms to make it as complicated as you want. And a lot of people do, including <laughs> myself. And then finally, conduction. What's going on in the snow? That's kind of what I'll end with. So radiation, we'll start there. So radiation in general, <coughs> what is it? You might have seen these kind of charts before. The electro